Philip Davis is the Prime Minister of the Bahamas. He is known locally and internationally as an acclaimed corporate and human rights lawyer, a distinguished legal educator, a sports enthusiast, and a toastmaster. We are honored to be joined by the Prime Minister today to discuss the economy, the environment, and critical regional priorities. Mr. Prime Minister, it's wonderful to have you here. Welcome to the Swift Hour. It's a pleasure to me to join you. I want to thank you, uh, Matthew, for inviting me to this Concordia event summit uh, this week, and also just to have this conversation with you today. I really want to dive into economic issues first, but of course I also can appreciate how linked they are to climate issues. You gave a very, very impassioned speech with a number of different references around the climate, around sustainability. But let's talk about the economy. As, uh, as part of the region, are you starting to see the region really become closer together towards economic cooperation, or are you seeing it become less together? Well, I think economically, we, we are attempting to forge relationships that will buoy all of our economies, and that is becoming more real today than it used to. Uh, and that's still a, a journey that we're on, and hopefully at one day we'll be where we have been able to leverage each of our economies so that it can help each other do better in this world economy. Are you seeing the different institutions, whether it be CARICOM, the Organization of American States, World Bank, the UN, are these institutions designed for this era? I think the design of these institutions require some relook. Um, in today's world, with all the issues that uh, that impacting what I call the various blocks, the various countries within these blocks, and the, the system that was set up, and these have been set up quite a while ago, do require some revisiting. So for example, when we talk about the Overseas Development Assistance, which is a component of, of something that most of these institutions uh, buy into, how one access overseas assistance as a country um, requires uh, change. My country, for example, that is, that is considered a high-income country, we are not eligible to some of the financial assistance that's afforded to many other countries because they say I'm a high-income country. When you look at my vulnerabilities, how we are so vulnerable to many things, um, it, is, it is not a relevant factor today. It is based on my per capita income when I have a, a, a huge amount of persons who are in a high income bracket with many, many thousands more in a lower income bracket. So my per capita is skewed a bit. But even put, put aside the per capita income, look at my vulnerabilities. So when we talk about the, the relooking of these, these institutions, we don't need to have a fresher look as to how we as countries come together into these organizations to be able to be sensitive to all of the players in, the, in these institutions. So the OAS, for example, which has all the Latin American countries uh, and the Caribbean countries, and how the disparity between those countries and what drives and even the political systems in these countries the, the, the multilateral arrangements that bring us together have to take these into account. And more importantly, uh, most of these institutions are not as sensitive as they ought to be to the smaller island development cities or the smaller economies. And, and very often things are done without taking into account the sensitivities and sensibilities of these smaller island cities. Well, I think to that, to that point in, 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 in my role with designing this summit and other summits, I think a lot of people in my space make a very, very critical error as well, which is we say, let's have a conversation. So let's have a bunch of heads of government from uh, the Caribbean all on the same panel. And what I, what I think is so important is to really differentiate, but also to elevate. But is it challenging? Do you have to, is it challenging to be able to elevate at a time when the world is focused on Israel and Gaza, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, even Venezuela. Yeah, well, you're quite right. It's very difficult to get to what I call that din um, because uh, we are very often forgotten. We're never in a conversation in these matters. And what, what and I don't like to say the global north, what the major economies have to appreciate or the major the world powers of the fishing is that what they do impacts and affects us. 
um, the war, the war in uh, Ukraine, with the you know with uh, with the supply chain disruptions, the 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 uh, the other factors that that with the logistical um, issues as to feeding ourselves, because uh, we, for example, imported a lot of uh, fertilizer from Ukraine. That has been cut off and it's not as, as easily accessible as it ought to be because of that conflict. If I use the word the global north for the want of another description at this time, recognize that China is still considered part of the global south, but if I use the global north and all of those other major countries, if they recognize that the tension that, that exists between them has a debilitating effect on small island developing states like us and for another way, the global south, and that they need to take these factors into account because we are seriously impacted by what they do. Let's talk a bit on, on climate change and, and broader sustainability issues. You're on the front lines of this I am. every day. What are you seeing in terms of tangible solutions to addressing climate? And what are you seeing as some of the biggest obstacles towards advancement? If I deal with the obstacles first, for the Bahamas, Doris impact cost the Bahamas $3.4 billion, and it only took four days for that loss. My annual revenue is $2.9 billion. So in four days, my annual revenue is wiped out and more. That's more than an obstacle. Furthermore, for, for recovery and rebuilding, I had to find those money. I didn't have it readily available. I had to borrow. So this cycle that we find ourselves in, which creates another obstacle of having to borrow, to rebuild, and to recover. And within the next year or two, borrow, rebuild, and recover. It's a cycle that creates the, the extremities of our vulnerabilities. So we need to find a solution to that. And the solution has to be, right? The solution has to be that those who are responsible for the, the, change, the consequences, they ought to pay. The Bahamas, as you know, we, we, don't, we have not contributed this, this problem. Our, our emissions are what, 0.01% or less to the world. We sequester more than we emit. But yet still, the brunt of the burden as a result is borne by us. And so we need to, to find a way. We have to, I, I am an optimist. I believe that humanity has the ingenuity to find a solution to reverse this trend. We just need to get together, fund what is necessary to get that ingenuity to work, to get the innovations that's necessary to reverse the trend. And that's, I, I, I'm optimistic about that. I think we can do it. So for example, if the oil producing countries allow where the energy producing companies would come together and say, look, uh, fossil fuel, if we could find a way to continue buying fossil fuel without emitting emissions, why don't we find solutions to that? we we'll part. Because no doubt the loss of profit by these companies and the loss of the taxes that, that a country could get from these companies weighs heavily in the decision-making process. So why don't you get together and find, find that solution, maybe? That is some of the things we have to do. In addition, we need to stop talking and start acting. Um, we've been talking for years. This year's the 29th COP meeting. So what that tells you, for 29 years, the leaders of the world have been coming together to talk about this challenge. But, but has the needle moved? We have today more frequent hurricanes, more intense. Weather patterns are, are so unpredictable. For the first time, we have exceeded the 1.5 degrees Celsius for one complete year. Not, not in one day, one week or month, for one entire year, 
we have exceeded the 1.5 degrees Celsius, but which was the target for us to meet to keep the temperature down. We have not exceeded that. So what is next? It requires a, a fundamental change in what we have been doing, and we have to find it, find out what will work. Uh, but we've been talking about it just too long. So Matthew, it's not just a will, but it has to be some real tangible action. I'd like to just uh, talk about you for a minute. You are not a career politician. Well, I got into it very late in my life. <laughs> and so you were a lawyer for most of your life? Yes, what, I was. Did you just wake up one day and say, maybe I want to try this? Not, not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> if I talk about uh, very briefly the history of my involvement in politics, my father was always what I call one of the generals, uh, you know, knocking on doors for the party I'm, I'm now the leader. And very often I would go with him. So as a campaigner, he was a campaigner for many years. And then when I became a lawyer, my two law partners, uh, there were three of us in a law firm, and each of them went into frontline politics in 77. And each of them became prime minister, Perry Christie, Hubert Ingo. At one point in time, when there was a, when there was a thought that I may have leave the party I was a part of and join another party, which was then headed by Hubert Englund. Uh, I was called by my father and said, look, don't do that. And then here's a seat, you go and run in that seat. So I really followed the advice of my father. I was in my 40s when I did that and there I am today. Prime Minister Philip Davis of the Bahamas, thank you so much for joining the Swift House. I, I do appreciate it. I want to again thank you for the opportunity that you gave me this morning to speak to you up in Cordia Summit. It was a wonderful experience, and I trust that what I had to say uh, uh, excited and inspired uh, your audience to, to action. Hopefully that audience will start acting quickly. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.